inguinal canal and spermatic cord. So to understand really the inguinal canal, we need to review layers of the abdominal wall. So this is showing a, a sagittal section of the of the pelv abdominal wall, pelvis, and perineum of a developing male. Uh, it's in a schematic where it's a sagittal section. We're looking at a medial view. To start with, the most superficial layer of the abdominal wall is the skin, epidermis and dermis. These, are gonna, these layers are going to sound familiar. Next is the hypodermis, which is the camper's fascia, primarily fat, and some of that scarpa's fascia, that deeper, more fibrous connective tissue that makes up the hypodermis. Next layer is the external oblique muscle and associated aponeuroses. And next is the internal oblique muscle with associated aponeurosis. And then the transversus abdominis muscle. And you'll recognize that it actually, as that extends down to the perineum area, the muscle ends in the aponeurosis uh, fuses with the transversalis fascia, shown in pink. Then the next is this preperitoneal fascia, the one that we call before. So preperitoneal because it's uh, in front of. But if you go down below, we call this subperitoneal fascia. Sub means below. And then behind, we call it the retroperitoneal fascia. And so collectively, this is what we've been uh, used bef term before, extrasolomic fascia, sometimes known as extrasorosal fascia, all synonyms. And so uh, the term that, um, and then there's that testis, sorry, that's located within this extra salomic fascial space. This gubernaculum testis, don't worry about the name of it, is a, it's this connective tissue structure that pulls the testis down from the retroperitoneal area to the subperitoneal area, and it's going to pull through, uh, projecting through, taking all layers of the abdominal wall to make the scrotum. I'm going to use the term extraperitoneal fascia in space to describe that location, the fascial space of the testis. And finally, there's our parietal peritoneum, that uh, salomic sac, mesothelium, that lines the internal wall of the abdominal cavity. So there's our testis. Now, this picture shows the same thing, just all those uh, layers of the abdominal wall are layered. And so as that testis descends, notice that it's now f pulling all the layers of the abdominal wall with it until finally it's within the scrotal sac. Now the layers of the abdominal wall shown with that orange little semicircle and look at the layers of the spermatic cord. The same colors, same layers that are inside there that make up the spermatic cord and then eventually also the scrotal sac. Something to to, to uh, pay attention to. I'm just showing now layers of abdominal wall, layers of spermatic cord is there's the peritoneal cavity and the extension of the peritoneal cavity is called the processus vaginalis. It's this uh, little sac that came with this testis as it went through the wall, but the testis is not inside that processus vaginalis. It's not in it. The testis is in that EP, extra peritoneal fascial layer. That processus vaginalis is this pocket of mesothelium that surrounds the testis itself uh, with a little uh, fluid. So here's an anterior view of, of the inguinal region. And the inguinal canal is the canal that connects the testis with the abdominal wall. And so in green, there is that inguinal canal. And so the outside opening is called the superficial inguinal ring, and the one on the inside is called the deep inguinal ring. And the inguinal canal is what connects those two rings, and that's what the testis descended through. And that inguinal canal is bordered or bounded, uh, bounded, I just made up that word, uh, at the boundaries of um, formed by the layers of the abdominal wall. So what are those layers? Well, first, there's our skin normal. Then there's this within the sublayer of the skin is this dartus muscle and fascius. It's smooth muscle. It helps wrinkle the scrotal sac to allow for more heat to radiate out. Um, and whether you remember that or not, I don't care. Um, in blue, you'll notice the external oblique uh, muscle and aponeurosis and that it becomes the external spermatic fascia, the outside layer that's surrounding. And it's a step to section, so it doesn't show it, but imagine that layer going all the way around surrounding the testis. Now, the inguinal ligament is literally just the inferior border of the external oblique aponeurosis that attaches to the anterior superior iliac spine and courses down, and you don't see it, but it goes to the pubic bone through inguinal ligament. Um, 
The next layer is our internal oblique muscle and associated fascia. So there's our internal oblique muscle, and it courses down and becomes the cremasteric muscle and associated fascia. This is skeletal muscle, and it contracts, and it can pull the testis closer to the body or relax to allow it to go farther away. This is important because our body temperature is 37 degrees centigrade, but for sperm to be... Um, to mature, it needs to be at 34 degrees centigrade. So that's why the testis is outside the body. But if the body temper, if the outside temperature drops, such as going in very cold water, the cremasteric muscle pulls the testis closer to the body wall to make sure that the temperature doesn't drop. So that cremasteric muscle can move the testis closer or farther away by relaxation uh, to the body wall. Um, next we, oh, and then this, I just wanted to show this picture that shows the internal oblique and then there's the cremasteric muscle. So it's not in step to section. You get this idea of muscle and fascia surrounding the testis. All right. Now the transverse, transversus abdominis aponeurosis, uh, does not give any contribution to this spermatic cord and scrotal sac. And so it's shown there, you can see the color above, but it doesn't go down below. Um, transversalis fascia, however, does. That transversalis fascia becomes our internal spermatic fascia that surrounds the whole inside, this connective tissue of the spermatic cord. And then we have our parietal peritoneum shown up above. That's that mesothelium and salomic sac that lines the inside of the abdominal cavity. And then there's our tunica vaginalis that surrounds the, um, that's the outpouching of the parietal peritoneum around the testis. But notice they're not connected. And the only time they're connected is going to be dealing with um, an indirect inguinal hernia that we'll talk more about, or at least increases the risk of it. But in normal individuals, there is no connection between parietal peritoneum and the tunica vaginalis. All right, so the next is this extra peritoneal fascia and the contents of the spermatic cord because they're in the same fascial plane. So let's talk about the contents. There's the ductus deferens outlined in yellow, also known as, many people call it the vas deferens. Vas means vessel, and this is not a vessel. That's why ductus deferens is the best description. The ductus deferens is responsible for transporting sperm during ejaculation from the testis up through the spermatic cord, through the inguinal canal, then back into the ejaculatory duct in the prostate gland and out the urethra and the penis. Ductus deferens, very thick, smooth muscle wall to move uh, sperm at a fast rate. The testicular artery, this arises from the uh, abdominal aorta and provides blood supply, and this courses through that deep inguinal ring, through the inguinal canal, out the superficial inguinal ring, and provides blood supply to the testis. The pampiniform plexus of veins is transporting blood the opposite direction, and this is a... Um, and it's a, it's a plexus, so instead of just having one vein, there's like three or four veins that wrap themselves around that testicular artery. Notice that. And they're taking blood in the opposite direction. The left pampiniform plexus of veins goes to the left renal vein, and the right pampiniform plexus of veins just goes directly to the IVC. We'll talk more about that in detail in the posterior abdominal wall lecture. And the ilioinguinal nerves, and seen going between the transverse abdominis and internal oblique, going through the inguinal canal, and then into the spermatic cord. Recognize that it does not enter the deep inguinal ring, but it does enter the inguinal canal and comes out the superficial inguinal ring. The genital branch of the genital femoral nerve that I do not have in my illustration, oh, unfortunately, um, enters the deep inguinal ring, goes through the inguinal canal, comes out the superficial inguinal ring, and also does sensory to that spermatic cord.